Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I am back with a viewer request video, um, this time about how you can use Spark Structured sc Streaming with Kafka. So using Kafka to monitor your Spark topics, make sure data is being passed correctly, um, and also obviously creating the data and streaming it in using Spark. Um, so, so at a high level, what's gonna happen is we're going to check a Kafka topic, make sure that it's healthy, make sure that you know your event stream, your data that's coming in is uh, coming in properly, right? And then we're going to use Spark to then take that data um, and actually stream it into maybe our backend database, wherever uh, we want that end destination to be. Um, and if there's an error, send out an email operation just saying, hey, you know, something's wrong with our Kafka, whoever's on call, get after it. So what we're gonna do here, as we've been doing a lot of our recent videos, is just starting from scratch, showing you what libraries you need to import, what stuff you're going to need um, to do to set up your DAG to use Spark and Kafka together. And hopefully you get inspired, you figure out, hey, now I know how to do this. This unlocks new possibilities. Um, and if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me a ton. Um, so first, what I'm going to do uh, is go into my desktop, CD into Data Guy Video Repos, and we're going to go create Kafka, Spark. And then we're going to CD in there, Kafka, Spark, and run astro dev init just to generate a you know overall Airflow directory. Then we'll open this within VS Code. So we'll go into our data guy video repos, Kafka Spark, and we'll have our folder structure uh, over here on the left side. And so a couple things we'll need to import in our requirements file um, is number one, we'll need the Databricks operator. So bring that in so we can interact with Databricks. So you can swap out the Databricks part with whatever Spark you're using. Uh, I just use Databricks because it's just easier for me to access. I don't want to run Spark on my local computer because um, I did it before and it just was incredibly resource intensive. So don't recommend it. Um, but if you don't have access to Databricks, you want to run locally, doesn't change anything here. You just you know swap out that kind of step for running it locally. Um, then we will also need our email operator. Um, so bring that in here. Uh, and that's just how we're going to you know read them from emails. And then we're also going to need our uh, Kafka Python. Um, so if we bring in Kafka Python here, so we're actually gonna use Py Kafka within the context of a Python operator um, to actually, you know what, scratch that. I just changed the DAG to use the dedicated Airflow operators because why would we use uh, just the Kafka operator? Um, so here, and then we'll also just add a notification to the notification notifier level so we don't bother around with that because you should use the notifier now. Um, so, so now we're all set up in the requirements file at least. Um, and what we'll go now to do um, is just start building our DAG. So this actually isn't super uh, complex in terms of setup, which is great. Um, so we'll just create a new DAG, uh, Kafka Databricks, um, and then let's get started building. Um, so as we're building our DAG, we're gonna have to import those packages that we just defined. Let me also save those so I don't forget. Yes. Um, so here, import them at the top. So we'll have DAG, Kafka producer operator, uh, Databricks submit run operator, uh, Airflow utils days ago, just so we can say, hey, start this one day ago. Um, just a function, funky little functional uh, little utility there. Um, and then we're also gonna organize the email operator, uh, add that back. So we have our DAG, and then I also forgot I wanted to add a validation message. Uh, so here, this is where if you want to actually validate uh, the data that you're consuming from Spark, uh, then you can add your validation logic here. I'm just gonna return true so this works and I don't actually have to uh, figure out some mechanism to validate this data, um, as you'll see, because the message that we're going to be sending from Kafka to make sure, hey, you know, this e-commerce data is looking good, ingest it with Spark. Um, we're going to say, hey, message, if not, validate message. So this is where you can say, read in the data, perform some kind of validation method. Uh, if it fails, uh, then, so we have that if not logic there. So like a handy little reverse if statement, uh, send an alert using the email operator to your example email, uh, valid message saying this message doesn't look good. Um, and so that's how just introduce some error handling in, which is always good to have. Um, so you 
don't just run into random failures. You actually have errors uh, that mean something. Then you have your Kafka producer operator. And so what this is going to do uh, is provide clickstream uh, data to a Kafka topic. So take this clickstream data and make it available for uh, Databricks to then take it and uh, you know extract it, do some transformations. Obviously in this case, it's just very silly uh, click data, but imagine this is you know a JSON of customer data or many JSONs, an array of different JSON objects, and your Spark job is taking all those, cleaning them up, putting them into a data frame, and then uploading them into your backend database. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do next which is running a Databricks job. So here, our next step is going to be run Databricks job, Databricks submit run operator, uh, and then we're just calling it Databricks job, Databricks default. Uh, so you know, obviously I'll show you where to set the connections uh, later. New cluster, cluster configuration, the notebook task that's going to be actually processing your data. Um, so you know, obviously in this case, we're just doing click data data, so not too much processing to do, but here's where you would introduce your own kind of Spark jobs to actually do some transformations, do some uploading, whatever. Um, and then what we can do is, let's say, you know, maybe you want to do the reverse. And so this is, you know, where I'm just kind of trying to fit in uh, maybe a silly example, but just so you can see for the uh, viewer that actually wanted to see this, hey, maybe you wanted to do Spark to stream. Um, so here, what you can do is take that uh, producer operator again and use it to take your process data from Spark. Uh, maybe you produce, you know, brought it into an S3 bucket, you've sent it back into Kafka, um, and you're sending that process data to another Kafka topic. Uh, so just want to kind of show you both options there, and then we'll set up our bit mapping just as so. Um, and that is it. Uh, so now we can start up our local Airflow environment. I'll show you what this uh, will look like in the Airflow UI, and then maybe I'll show you a couple ways you can uh, customize this or extend it. And actually, before I do that, I do want to show you just kind of an example Spark job that you could use to, you know, take that data from the Kafka topic and produce it to another Kafka topic. Um, so if I call this, uh, you know, Spark.Scala, um, what I can do here is if you're in the Scala, uh, you know, obviously you can just use this example, but this could be a pie spark. This could be any kind of job. Um, but here within this Kafka streaming job, what this is going to do is just, you know, define your schema for the incoming data, event type, product ID, timestamp. Um, and, you know, this is obviously kind of a more e-commerce example where it's going to read that data from Kafka um, in the format of Kafka. So you have to tell Spark to be able to read the Kafka stream in that format, um, select cast values a string, and you can kind of go through the logic here where you have the processing logic before writing it back to Kafka. Um, so you can see, you know, where your path to your checkpoint is, your output mode, uh, start, and basically just a ton of different functions. But if you're not super comfortable with Scala, write this with Python, um, and you can still kind of perform a lot of the same functions. Um, Scala just is another full language support, and I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit today. I'm feeling funky. Um, so now I'll actually kick over the Airflow UI after we run our handy dandy Astro Dev Start, uh, and I'll see you over there. So here within the Airflow UI, um, we can now start setting up our connections to actually run and make sure one sec that our DAG gets noticed. So here we have our real-time recommendations DAG. Oh, and sorry, I need to scroll down here. Um, so it took me a couple of tries. My screw up was I didn't even add .py at the end of my DAG file. So that uh, was why I wasn't rendering initially. And then I just had to figure out some connection details. Um, and so for your own connection details, what you're going to want to have it look like um, is something like, so in the Kafka default, this one is funky. You are going to need a config dictionary to connect to your Kafka uh, instance. And so what that's going to look like is something like this. So here's a producer config, um, or here, let me delete these risk bros connect to. Um, I don't know why there's all these comments in here. But anyway, so this is, you know, what's going to look like your boots local, if you're running it locally, um, and all the different details. And if you're using a consumer hook, you actually need to have a different config file. So just make sure you note that. Um, and then for Databricks, luckily, it's a lot easier. So if you go to Databricks underscore default actually had it in the environment file, but I'm just going to show you how you can do it within the UI as well. Super simple. You're actually just going to do a token, uh, and your password is going to be whatever your token is from the Databricks UI. If you don't know how to get that, go check out my previous Databricks videos, and it shows you how to generate a token for logging in via the UI, um, at least with Azure. And that's all you need. So just save it, 
and you're off to the races. Um, and then you have a you, know, you have a DAG that is looking, listening to a Kafka topic, produ- or pulling from a Kafka topic, processing that data, and then producing out to another Kafka topic, or you could sub in your own uh, end location. Um, so that was today's uh, viewer submission suggestion, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a good one. Data guy out.